Hi everyone and welcome along to today's quick fix clinic. Today I'm answering a question about perspective, about how we create a sense of distance and how we show what's in the foreground and what's not. Well, on my screen here at the moment I'm showing you a few recent sort of landscape pieces or pieces with a very strong sense of perspective and um, they all have one thing in common. The items in the foreground are very crisp and the things in the background are extremely soft focus and luckily for all of us watercolour is a brilliant medium to have a go at this. So I've got a blank piece of paper underneath all of this and I'm going to show you exactly how we do it using this as a reference. So I'm going to begin by wetting my page. I've got a size 8 brush here but if you've got a, a larger brush for doing large landscapes then that's a great idea but we're going to wet the page because I'm just doing a little sample for you basically in the in the watercolour quick fix but I do have a landscapes playlist which would be perfect for you to have a look at to see uh, numerous examples of what I mean when I'm talking about this sense of perspective with watercolour. Okay, so first off we might be adding in a bit of sky and it's a nice hazy sky. Um, we're allowing sort of the blue to fade down into almost nothing on the horizon and the page is nice and wet so it's blending really nicely. However, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put in a line of trees along the horizon and the way I'm going to do that is to just allow this, uh, you know, a few seconds more of drying to the water to seep in and then I'm just going to dab my brush into the wet page and in doing so I'm going to create some very, very soft focus trees. So let's have a go. Notice how the longer I leave my brush on a dab, the larger that blob gets. So then just doing little dabs, we can have things even smaller off in the distance. It's just all about dabbing on the spot because what you're doing is you're pulsing the paint out. You can see it growing and it'll continue to grow even after you've stopped looking at it. So if you look at that, we've got a real sense of distance and perspective even within the soft focus area. Now I'm just going to let this dry 100% and then we're going to do um, uh, another layer of focus which shows something even more in the foreground. This is also a good time to say that you can see how the paper has sort of buckled up around the edges because we've put a lot of water in the middle, um, not around the edges. Normally when I'm doing landscapes I will sort of have my paper stretched down as you can see here, this very crisp line is done from masking around the edges. So that's something else to consider if you do want to have a go with this kind of technique. But for today, we're just sort of looking at the, the fundamentals of perspective. So we're not too worried about it. So the other thing that helps with a sense of distance and, and nearness is how vibrant your colour is. Now you can see that these colours have faded in their drying um, and in placing now something that's not only very crisp onto a dry page but also a much more uh, sort of concentrated deep dark colour that we are getting uh, perspective through that. So let me just... So these little sort of brush strokes are creating a, a sense of a, a bank of a river it's all very sort of very simple. I, I do enjoy this type of watercolour painting very much. And then a little little tree, I think.
you can see how this tree fairly effortlessly just layers up over the distant uh, landscape of the trees sort of around this lake. So this is just a really, really simple way to create a sense of nearness and farness by starting off both with uh, a paler and less concentrated colour palette, but also using the water to soften um, all of the painting in the background, painting onto a wet surface, allowing for these wonderful soft blends, and then contrasting with more concentrated colours once the page has dried in the foreground. But as I said, do have a look on my landscapes playlist and you'll find all sorts of wonderful tutorials to try this out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.